Hello to all of you wonderful adventurers! We are back with another video. In this one, we are going to be talking about how to get fairies, what they do, and why you should grab them. To start off, fairies are kind of similar to pets, in which case they just help you with your grind, they make everything more efficiently, and they can even help in PvP. Now, this is all due to their skills that they have, which I will cover in just a moment. First, we need to talk about how you actually get your fairy. To start off, once you become level 53, you will unlock the quest called ADV Support Level 53 Fairy Mysterious Companion. By doing this quest, it will give you your very first fairy, and you'll be going through all this. But let's say you have already completed this and you want a better fairy. There are indeed ways to do it. So first off, we can talk to Thaya. And in the exchange category, we have Lelia's petals, which you can exchange to or for one sealed fairy's wing. What a sealed fairy's wing does is once you grab it, you can just right click on it in your inventory and it will give you one random fairy. There are four separate tiers of fairies, starting with faint, going to glimmering, going to brilliant, and finally to radiant. Each different fairy has their own gift, in which case bright is the one I have. It gives a gift of plus one luck. Beyond that, there's also the skills that they provide you, in which case, every 10 levels it provides you a new skill. And, of course, with every single tier fairy, it unlocks more levels that you can get, meaning you will unlock more and more skills the higher level your fairy is. The first level fairy can only have one skill, if you exclude the extra little bonus skill it has here of luck. The next level will have two skills, the next level will have three, and finally we have the radiant level, the best level which has five. These skills are the main function of the fairy, as sure, the gift is quite nice, plus one luck, but the rest of them are quite valuable. Now, let's go through the list of skills that we have. So first of all, we have Tingling Breath. This one is not the greatest. Sure, it can be helpful, but a lot of the times, people do not like it as much. We have levels 1 through 5 of this skill, and also, each level this skill unlocks at different tiers of fairy. The first level can be unlocked by every tier, while the second level cannot be unlocked by the first tier, only the second and above. Third level can only be unlocked by third and above, and fourth and above that can only be unlocked by the best fairy. This skill allows you to have extra time underwater before you start suffocating. And then we have the feathery steps skill. This skill is quite valuable as it increases the weight penalty you have. At tier 1, you can hold up to 105% before having a penalty. Tier 2 is 110, tier 3 is 115, and so on from there up to 125%. It follows the same trend in skill tiers as the first one, where the first one can be unlocked by any, the second one can only be unlocked by the top 3, third one by the top 2, and above that only by the number 1 fairy. Next, we have fairies tier. This one is also really good as it allows you to have a instant resurrection, kind of similar to an Aeleon's tier, but in this case it is a fairy's tier. You can only use one for the cooldown given, while tier 1 has a 12 hour cooldown, tier 2 is a 6, tier 3 a 3 hour cooldown, and tier 4 a 1 hour cooldown. I, on my fairy, have a tier 4 of this. I'm kind of happy about that. I was really excited when I rolled it. But it only has tier 4 as the max instead of a tier 5, like most things. It follows the same trend, except for there is no tier 5, so it's just maxing out at tier 4, which is a Radiant Fairy skill. We have an Exhaustible Well. This one isn't the greatest. It's kind of similar to Tingling Breath, as it's very situational. Tingling Breath helps underwater, but doesn't help with anything else, such as grinding or deaths or any of that. This one... An exhaustible well only helps in deserts or snow areas where it will pop a purified water or star NST for you. With the first tier of it unlocking 30 minute cooldown of popping this, meaning you'll need to manually pop it anyway even if you get it. Tier 2 having a 20 minute cooldown, it has the same issue, you'll need to manually pop it. And you will honestly need to manually pop these items unless you get a tier 5 which is a radiant fairy skill and even then you might manually want to pop it with a 5 minute cooldown because desert illness can even start happening within a minute of being cured. So overall this is one of the most useless skills in the entire selection of fairies, followed by tingling breath. Now the rest of them you are going to want. Here is what people say is the best one and after reading it I have to agree. Tier 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 allows you to automatically pop HP and MP potions using your fairy rather than having to hotbar them. 
it has a cooldown of 6 seconds for tier 1, 5 for tier 2, 4 for tier 3, 3 for tier 4, and 2 for tier 5. I have a tier 5 on my fairy, and it really helps because it automatically pops a potion off of cooldown. It also really helps if you have an infinite potion because you can just set it to where it automatically pops no matter what HP you're missing. Now we have what people also consider could be the best skill, Continuous Care. What this allows you to do is it allows you to tell your fairy to automatically pop buffs for you. In this case, let's say you want to pop a meal or you want to pop a elixir. We can go into the game to show you this one as I also have this skill. It unlocks the auto use items section and it allows you to automatically pop all of these buffs. In my case, for preset 3, I have selected the Sylvia meal, Valencia meal, Serendio meal, and King of Jungle hamburger. I'll further talk about my buff selection in a buff guide that I will give later, as well as a Frenzy Dread of Corruption, some Perfumes of Courage, and on my tier 1, my preset 1, I have some EXP buffs as well. It makes it to where it automatically pops each of these buffs that you have selected once cooldown is up meaning you can keep them up continuously without having to hop on them. It's really good for grinding and specifically for meal usage because these meals have an hour 20 minute duration with a 30 minute cooldown, meaning you can pop four separate buffs before the cooldown is up. This also means you can rotate them all and it doesn't count as a meal in the case of prawn meals, meaning you can also pop a simple prawn meal with all of these buffs as well. Once again, I will further talk about that in a buff guide separately from this. So now, we have Morningstar, which there's only one tier of it, it can be got on any fairy, it's a pretty good skill, and let's say you have a faint fairy, this skill is probably the best one that you can get for it. Also, I forgot to mention Continuous Care only can be unlocked on a Radiant Fairy, the best fairy. But what this skill allows you to do is, I will show you in game, it allows you to grind with a nightlight. So if it is nighttime and you're having trouble seeing, you can just turn this on and it'll give you a nice little bright light to use. In my case, it's blue, but a lot of people have a green version of this light. I don't like the green one as well, personally. So there are five personalities of fairy. Each one give you a different thing about... So there are five different personalities of a fairy. There's the meticulous personality, the joyful, the aloof, the prim, and the serene personality. I personally have the aloof fairy. This is what gives me that blue glow. There's also the green glow, the orange glow, the pink glow, and the yellow glow. Here's what the meticulous looks like, the joyful, the aloof, my personal favorites. The prim, I do like pink, but it can kind of get annoying, and the serene morning star. There are also some skins that you can get for your fairy, though most of them cost real cash. Now we're going to talk about the growth of a fairy. So, as let's say you start out with a minimal level fairy. You start out with just the faint fairy. You can level that fairy up from tier to tier by feeding them sweet honey wine inside of the growth section. You unlock the growth section once you get that fairy to its maximum level. In this case, I have a maximum level fairy, so the growth section is locked, but if you start out with a minimum level fairy, a faint fairy, and then you get it to level 10, which is the max level for that fairy, you can choose the growth section, and you can feed it sweet honey wine, which you can buy off the market or get from daily rewards, or even trade in Lelia's petals, or some sealed fairy wings, which then you can trade in the sealed fairy wings. What did I just unlock? Oh, it's a guild mission. Never mind. Then you can trade in the sealed fairy wings for sweet honey wine. This is kind of an odd way to do it, but you can do it that way. And you can level up your fairy with the growth section. Different amounts of honey wine gives you a different percentage of success, and it can go up to 100%, which is what I would recommend you doing. Since if it fails, you have to feed it even more honey wine, which can be an annoyance. Which is what I named my fairy, by the way. Annoyance, as you can see above my little guild name. Right here, Annoyance. Once you get them to level 10 and use the growth skill, you then have to get them to level 20 and then use the growth skill, then level 30, use the growth skill, and then finally you get the Radiantly Shining Fairy, the best fairy, the last tier of the fairies. And once you get that to max level, you get these skills. The growth section should look like this, and you'll be given the option of resetting growth, in which case I would recommend you do that. Once you do that, different 
amounts of honey wine is required for each tier. First tier is decently easy, you won't be required to do much. It'll take about 45 sweet honey wine, glimmering will take about 150, and then finally the brilliance will take about 400. Overall, this will cost you probably about 600, 700 million total. So it can be quite spendy. Now, getting them up to max level is spendy, as I said, but there is something that can be even more spendy. The skills that the fairy gives is random. Every single time it gains 10 levels, it will give you a random skill. Now, you can, of course, change the skills, but I would not recommend it. If you get a fairy you do not like, it is honestly best to restart and try again with a new fairy. The reason I say this is because if you want to change a skill, let's say I do not want Tingling Breath 1, which I really don't, requires 5. It doesn't say what it requires, but it requires Thigh's Orbs, which you can only get through the Pearl Shop. There is no other method of getting them and five of them will cost roughly $12 for one chance at a skill change. Every 10 levels, it requires one more orb. So let's say you have one skill, it will require only one orb, meaning $2.50, but even still, that is a lot, and I would not recommend doing this. I would recommend just starting off with an entirely new fairy and trying again. Now, the good news about these skills is when you are learning them, the higher tiers of the skills have a higher chance of being learned. So you have a hard time learning low levels of the skills. Let's say I want Feathery Steps 5, there's a 11% chance that changing the skill will give me that. Now if I want 4, there's a 10% chance that happens, but you're always going to want the highest level of the skill anyway. Forgot to mention, there is other ways other than Sweet Honey Wine to level them. Now to grow this fairy, you do need Sweet Honey Wine, that is kind of expensive, but if you don't want to level them with Sweet Honey Wine, then you can also feed the Lemuria armor. You can get Lemuria armor for the, on the market cheaper than you can get Sweet Honey Wine, but another way to get them is by grinding in Comma zones. Upper Gyphons will give you Lemuria armor, Narcs, well, Manchoms, which you also need to grind them anyway for the Mana Potion. Manchoms, or Miramok Ruins will give you them. Manchoms is over here. It will give you them. Alias Forest will give you them, it's one of the best drops for them, but it's also not the greatest zone to grind anymore because it kind of is outdated. Bronaros will give you them, and you do need to grind them for the health potion, and any of those zones will drop them for you. That armor can indeed be used, and I believe I have some in my marketplace at the moment, and by feeding it to your fairy, it just levels it up. If you factor in the amount of armor you're going to need to feed it, it will roughly cost you about 200 million more if you're starting out from the lowest fairy. So it can cost up to a billion coins every single time you try again for a new fairy. So it can be kind of costly, but overall it is worth it. Now we have talked about everything we have to say about fairies. We've talked about the growth of a fairy, we've talked about levels of the fairy, we've talked about skills, we've talked about the tiers, we've talked about the types of fairies, we've talked about the glows that each morning star can give based off of the personality of the fairy, and so on so forth. I hope this helped you guys. I hope you watch all the other videos that I've posted. Subscribe, turn on notifications, like this one, leave a comment, do anything you're gonna do, and I will see y'all later. Have a nice day, night, whatever time zone it is for you, and goodbye everybody.